In this video, you should learn how to use our solubility charts. And in, when we're doing double replacement reactions is when we want to use this particular chart. Now you have this from class and you have a copy of it and it would be handy to have that out while you're doing this video. But essentially, when we do a double replacement reaction, we remember that the only way the reaction is actually going to occur is if water can be formed, which in which case we're looking for H to pair up with OH, if a gas can be formed, and to be honest, we're not going to see that much often in general chemistry, and lastly, for a precipitate to be, for, to be formed. And a precipitate is just a solid that is formed when the two solutions mix. So the best way to illustrate how this works is to actually do an example. So let's look at if we were to take lead nitrate solution and react that with sodium, sodium iodide solution. Now, what we want to do is identify the positives and negatives in each of these compounds. So lead is the positive part of this compound and nitrate is the negative part. And then sodium is the positive part of that compound and iodine is the negative. And what's going to happen is you're going to try to pair up opposites. So lead is going to go with iodide and sodium is going to go after nitrate. You're going to switch their partners that they're currently with. Now, in order for this to happen, one of these two compounds has to be a solid. And so we're just going to look at it really quickly to see if it is. Now, we're going to try finding lead with iodide. So the way that this will work is we're going to find lead on our periodic table. And here, or not our periodic table, excuse me, on our solubility chart, there's lead. The positives are all listed down the left-hand side. And then we're going to find iodide. And we're going to look for that one. And you can see where the two cross. We have a little S. S stands for solid. If one of your two products is a solid, the reaction is definitely going to happen. So this reaction we already know will happen. <clears throat> the other one we can look at is sodium. So here's sodium. All right, hang on. We're going to get this pop back up. Sodium is here, and we're going to pair that now with nitrate. And nitrate is here, and you can see where sodium and nitrate intersect, it's aqueous. So now we know the states of our products. The only thing we have left to do is correctly write our formulas. So we're going to do that carefully by using our charges that we know, either from the periodic table or the pink sheet, depending on where we'll find that. So. Looking at your, looking at your um, ion sheet or your periodic table, you're going to find that lead is PB with a plus 2 charge and nitrate is NO3 with a minus 1 charge. Sodium from the periodic table is Ni, or Na with a plus 1 and iodine from the periodic table is I with a minus 1. Now, it doesn't matter what order you write your compounds in, but PB is going to pair up with I. Now, we want to put a plus 2 with a minus 1, so hopefully you guys can figure out that the formula should be PBI2. And based on what we saw up here, it should be a solid. The other product is sodium, Na, with nitrate. And we do always want to list the positive first. So we want to write NaNO3. And based on what we saw here, it's aqueous. And the only job we'd have left then is to correctly balance our equation. And to do so, we would put a 2 in front of the NaI and a 2 in front of the NaNO3. So there's one example on how you would use your solubility charts. So remember, in order for the reaction to happen, you need to have at least one of the products be a solid. So I'm going to do one more example, and I'll erase everything we've, we've done so far. Okay, now let's look at potassium nitrate pairing with ammonium fluoride. Now keeping in mind that potassium is going to try to pair up with the fluorine and the NH4 ammonium is going to try to pair up with the nitrate. So we're going to go back up to our activity series and try to pair K and F. So let's find potassium. There's potassium. 
And let's try to find our fluorine. Okay, our fluoride is right here. And you see where that they intersect is AQ. AQ means that it will be aqueous or not a solid. So let's look at the other possibility. That was NH4, ammonium, with nitrate. So find your ammonium. And now find your nitrate. And again, you see where they intersect. They're both aqueous. So because no solid can be formed on this reaction, we don't have to take the time to write the products because there would be no reaction at all. So hopefully that helps you use your activity, or excuse me, your solubility charts for double displacement reactions.